Hi there, this is Crystal here for Eating Disorder Hope and happy Friday. We continue to be appreciative of your involvement with our vlog series and today for our vlog update we're going to be touching on a very important topic that is relevant to a lot of individuals who are struggling with eating disorders. And I am joined by um, the president and founder of Eating Disorder Hope, Jacqueline Eckern, who also is a licensed professional counselor. And she's here to share her perspective on the connection between PTSD and eating disorders. So welcome, Jacqueline. We're so grateful you could take some time to join us this morning for our blog. Thanks, Crystal. And it's really cool that we're doing this right now during PTSD Awareness Month. So I'm particularly excited to participate. Thank you. And yes, as you mentioned, June is actually um, PTSD Awareness Month. And our friend Jenny Schaefer just wrote a fantastic article in the Huffington Post about the reality of the struggle of PTSD, because I think it's a mental illness that is not very well understood and there continues to be a lot of stigma surrounding this um, disorder. So we want to shed some more light on an issue that is a reality for a lot of people who are also dealing with an eating disorder. Yes. Um, so Jacqueline, can you tell us from your experience as a counselor who has worked with individuals with eating disorders, what is the connection between PTSD and an eating disorder? I think that, you know, eating disorders are complex. They're um, genetic and environmental. And when those two interact for certain individuals, it can result in an eating disorder. And um, it usually takes those two components to end up with an eating disorder. And PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, would be an environmental factor, right? It would be whether or not, you know, I've seen cases with clients that have struggled with eating disorders um, that have PTSD. And examples would be um, one lovely girl who remembered at three years old watching her dad pull out of the driveway. Uh, her parents were divorcing and she, um, he was leaving for the, you know, packed up his car and was leaving. So I guess she was maybe about three and a half. And the trauma of that um, haunted her and caused um, a lot of issues. And I think it was definitely a contributing factor to her eating disorder. Another PTSD experience that I've seen with folks with eating disorders is when um, uh, they've been sexually abused. Mm. And the remembering of that and the trauma of that is so difficult to cope with, understandably, that they often are seeking some sort of outlet or self-soothing mechanism, and uh, the eating disorder might fill that spot for some of those folks. Thank you for sharing that. I think that's a very helpful explanation. And, um, you know, it's not uncommon for the two to coincide together particularly for a person who may already be susceptible to uh, mental illness. The eating disorder can provide that temporary um, relief when you're struggling with such intense anxiety and stress that comes with PTSD. Can you tell us, Jacqueline, from your clinical perspective, what are some of the most effective forms of treatment for someone who is dealing with something so complex as PTSD and an eating disorder? Sure. Um, there's multiple treatments available out there. Definitely worth working with a professional who um, has specialization in post-traumatic stress disorder and eating disorders. Mm -hmm. That would be a good start. And some of the treatments that they will typically use are um, cognitive behavior therapy, which is um, really empowering because it's it's an attempt to examine the paradigms or ways you look at life and the things that have happened to you or happened to you and your perceptions about those and then uh, with the work of a therapist looking at new tools to reframe your thoughts um, so that it's less traumatic or negative for you it's, it's very commonly used in eating disorders and another one is exposure response therapy 
or, and this is basically helping people face their fears and giving up negative coping skills that they use to deal with those fears. Right. Also, um, eye movement des desensitization and reprocessing called EMDR. And that is often used to uh, try to lessen the emotional impact of the trauma on the individual. And this is done through rapid eye movement and it is done by a specialist who understands EMDR. Thank you for sharing that. And I think it's so helpful for people to understand that there are specialized resources for approaching both, uh, um, you know, concurring PTSD and eating disorders. And the more we can continue sharing those resources that are available, I hope it gives individuals who are struggling, um, you know, the courage to step out and reach out for help because it's definitely there. And I think connecting to those resources are so crucial for recovery. So thank you for explaining that, Jacqueline. Yeah, and I just wanted to add one thing I should have mentioned too, is you know, there is the sharing of the traumatic event um, with a sympathetic um, friend or an empathetic therapist, someone that you trust where you can basically rehash the trauma and feel safe to discuss it and express those emotions. And in doing that, and sometimes multiple, multiple times, it lessens its grasp and hold on the individual. And so that's, that's a really important thing to do, too. And that can be done even in group therapy. Hmm. But I'm so glad you mentioned that because I think connecting to other people is such an important part of recovery. So often I think it's easy to just stay isolated within your own struggle um, and I'm so glad you mentioned that because I think the more that you can open up, the more it promotes healing. Yes, I agree. Hmm. So Jacqueline, what, what words of encouragement might you have for someone who is dealing with both PTSD and an eating disorder? And I think um, just the gravity of having an eating disorder alone is so isolating and such a struggle and then adding on top of that the layer of ptsd in it and for anyone who's in that struggle i think can feel so overwhelmed like they're never going to get out of this and it can feel so hopeless so what encouragement might you have for this person well there's so much hope um for things to change and improve. And I think, you know, my own personal experience with my eating disorder and the work I did with a therapist on some um, traumatic issues that happened in my childhood is a good reference point. And, you know, it was about four years of on and off counseling with an outpatient therapist where I really worked on this other issues as well, but particularly some of these trauma issues. Um, and when I did that work, it involved a lot of tears and emotion and re-experiencing. And I remember going into the therapy crystal and thinking, this is just so sort of melodramatic and I've got to go back and relive this all. And why would you put yourself through that? It seemed asinine to me. Mm -hmm. But as I went through the process and, and spent time with those feelings, sitting with those really highly uncomfortable and painful feelings, and then went away from those sessions and had specific assignments, like to sit in a rocking chair with a cozy blanket and a hot chocolate. Mm. Um, it can be a sugar-free hot chocolate. <laughs> and I uh, cry and rock and kind of basically try to comfort that inner child of myself mm. during that process. And um, it, it, it's still a little bit seemed melodramatic at the time. I could certainly see people in my family rolling their eyes at that deal. But it was remarkable. I, it lessened the hold of that trauma and those behaviors that I had, those unhealthy behaviors I had developed to cope with that underlying tension and trauma. So there's so much hope. I mean, look now, we, we have a wonderful website and a team of people that can help people recover from an eating disorder. So you, if you're watching this and you are dealing with an eating disorder and PTSD, and you can do the work and come out the other end, it's so exciting how, how you will use your gifts and talents in this world and bloom. So you've got to have faith and you've got to do the work. Wonderful. Thank you. That's such 
great encouragement that I think people need to hear, you know, that there is hope and that it's just a matter of pushing through and connecting to those resources, which leads me to my last question. What resources might you suggest to someone who's looking for more information and treatment? You bet. Um, Nita National Eating Disorder Awareness has a great section on post-traumatic stress disorder where you can find um, valuable resources. If you go to the Eating Disorder Hope website and just put in the search box PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder, you will find numerous articles and um, some social media events that you can listen to where we've discussed this really important topic. Also, um, the Veterans Administration offers a lot of PTSD resources and um, you know, for anyone that's just dealing with this straight out of the gate, I would say initially reach out to a therapist if at all possible. And if you don't know where to go, start with your insurance company and find out who they can say that you're covered by and that offers those um, PTSD and eating disorder treatment specialties. If you don't have insurance, um, the county department uh, for you locally may have some resources for you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. We just really appreciate your professional and your personal insight into um, a topic that I think a lot of people can identify with. So thank you for sharing this invaluable insight. And just to echo what you said, um, we have some really great resources on the Eating Disorder Hope website, and we'll have some links provided below the video here for you if you're watching this. And we just want to encourage you to continue to stay connected to our vlog series where we will bring you updated information on topics that you're interested in listening to. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well to get those updates. So thank you again, Jacqueline, for just reminding us of this message of hope. There's always hope for recovery. And um, we just appreciate you taking the time to share with us today. Thanks, Crystal. Take right. care. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone.